our weekly timeout with Calgary's Child Magazine coming up in this quarter hour. But first, here's a tip for you the next time you find yourself on a bus without something to read. Look up and you just might be exposed to some poetry in motion. Here's more on that from Kellyanne Purdy. Calgary Transit customers have something new to ponder during their daily commute. Poetry in Motion is back and on board Calgary buses. Rita Irvin explains how the program was made possible. Calgary Transit along with Patterson Transit Advertising and the Canada Council for the Arts are the co-sponsors of this program. And from Transit's perspective, it helps create a nicer atmosphere for our customers to travel and gives them possibly food for thought on their way to work in the morning and also supports the local arts community. The poetry, featuring award-winning Western Canadian writers, will be displayed on Calgary Transit vehicles for the next few months. Peter Oliva, writer and volunteer chair of the Poetry in Motion Steering Committee, explains how they came to select the poems. They should be exciting, they should be thought-provoking, they should be funny, they should be, sometimes some of them should be head-scratchers, you know, just, just to give you kind of a morning smile. And if any of the poetry in motion has inspired you to compose a line or two, you're in luck. They will be having a contest this fall. You're watching Shaw TV. Well, the back-to-school edition of Calgary's Child magazine is on the shelves this week. It's chock full of back-to-school information and extracurricular ideas as well. And this week on our Time Out with Calgary's Child, we're offering some tips for early readers as the young ones are back to school. And here to help us with that is Leah Milner, a program teacher in the CBE's Early Literacy Program. Leah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, now, kids really start to learn to read in a, in a controlled environment when they get to grade one. Uh, but parents, I understand, can and probably should start them on that road much earlier than that, shouldn't they? They should, and just reading to your children as early as you can, mm -hmm. um, reading with your children right from when they're babies, getting them just aware of print. Um, some of the indicators, the best indicators of how your child will do um, in grade one is, um, the first indicator is their um, knowledge of the alphabet. And it's not just the being able to say the ABC song, it's being able to realize that that S is a S in a stop sign, or the M they see for McDonald's is an M. So making those connections, being able to recognize the letters of their names. So alphabet is a really important factor when they finish kindergarten. Um, that's an indicator if they know the alphabet, uh, most of the alphabets can recognize the letters of their name, they're off to a good start. Another area which uh, is a good indicator, a predictor of a child's success with reading once they get into grade one is the uh, ability to play with language. You might hear the term phonemic awareness and it's being able to break down the sounds in words. So a word like cat, k, at, um, they can hear the individual sounds, they can make rhyming words and they hear sounds such as in tongue twisters, they hear those repetitive initial sounds. So knowledge of the alphabet and that uh, being able to play with language are good predictors of success in reading. And these abilities, that knowledge uh, doesn't come by itself. I mean, you have to uh, drill that in, if you will. Um, and how do you do that? I mean... Well, you don't want to drill it in. <laughs> what you want to do, and families have been playing uh, an important role in early literacy mm -hmm. learning for their child and ways that they can continue um, helping their children, they can do it in an informal, fun, playful way, a natural way. So um, when they're reading with their children, there's so many things that they can do to make them aware of print. Um, when they're reading with their children, sitting beside your child, having them hold the book with you, following along, predicting, talking about the pictures, making that connection about what those little black scribbles are, um, recognizing letters, um, recognizing those little letters form words and those little words form sentences. So making children aware of print and an easy way just to get them aware of print is starting with their name with magnetic letters up on the fridge. Um, looking at their names, you know, whose name is that? Mm -hmm. You know, putting important names like mom, dad, their name and playing with the letters, getting them to know, um, you know, be aware of that print. Another area that uh, you want to work with is um, getting them to talk a lot about uh, their experiences and developing their oral language. So getting them to share how their school day went, 
things like that. Talking about those little pictures that they draw. They might look like little scribbles, mm -hmm. but often they have a story to tell. And reading should be should be a habit for them, an, an event that they look forward to, and again, something that you should talk about with them beforehand and I guess reflect on afterwards? Absolutely. Um, the one thing you can do that's the best homework daily would be t at least 10 minutes of reading daily with your children. So establishing a regular reading time with your children and making it a pleasurable experience, not sort of on a, on a you know, um, on the run reading. Mm -hmm. As Leah mentioned, the bookmarks are available at uh, public schools throughout the city and you can watch for these tips in the next issue of Calgary's Child magazine. And in the meantime, try the website calgaryschild.com. You can look for the 2000 class and program guide in the newest Calgary's Child. It's Calgary's Family Magazine and it's available at more than 600 locations across the city. We've been talking with Leah Milner of the Calgary Board of Education.